Okay, now we are to the uh, bass and guitar section of mixing uh, this this track by Blair and Company called People. Uh, so let's listen to where we're at so far. We got our drum kit in. Let's listen to see what our bass player is doing. So what I did is um, we have our, our bass DI, which is actually a DI off of his amp, so we're getting his EQ settings. Um, what I also like to do at these types of situations is I like to duplicate the track and put a amp simulator on it. So I'm just using uh, GTR's uh, tool rack. So this is the uh, simulated, and that's the natural bass. I I personally love this bass sound. Uh, this is this is the bass sound that I would normally dial in uh, for a modern sounding bass. It's got a lot of high end. A lot of the mids are scooped out, and um, and and it's it's got a nice low boost, which I think is super cool. So let's just. So we're looking at our frequency chart here. Okay, so we're living around 250. Uh, that's cool, except the only thing is that's going to be uh, guitar and horn territory. So uh, what we want to do first is let's... So we've balanced these two. So that the DI uh, is prevalent with the amp on the bottom, but let's do this. Let's make them so that they're the same level. Let's invert our polarity. It's inverted, so let's take it out. So this sounds weird. So this is this is an in this is an instance where our polarity flip is mattering. So let's flip it. Really prevalent in the mid range. Really cleans things up a lot. So let's take our, our natural sound out. Let's listen to our amp sound. Let's bring out the growl in this bass. I'd like to hear some mid-range growl, some low end out. Compressing this really hard. Trying not to uh, back our compressor up. may not be a real piece of gear, but it still has a gain stage. And by real piece of gear, I mean it may not be an outboard piece of gear, but it, it definitely still has a gain stage. You just want to make sure you're not driving things into clip. Unless it sounds cool, then you can do it. <laughs> DI handle the low end. We just want this to be nice and mid rangey. Take our little low pass filter in there too. Treating this more like a guitar than a bass, but let's bring our DI in. So 
since we're boosting our mids here, let's, let's do a little bit. Of that. Well, let's see how this is uh, performing with our kick drum, since these are our two lowest fundamental instruments. Sometimes I like to really exaggerate the frequency just to make sure that what I want is happening is, is actually happening. So what I do want to do is I want to add a little bit of our pitch, uh, our pitch slap to the bass because I think it would be cool. Let's see what that sounds like. I always like to add a little bit of chorus to bass. It just gives it some cool space. People are so quick to just uh, use DI bass. It's giving it just a nice little bit of movement too. Let's put a little bit of uh, small room on this also. So we've got a cool little parallel thing going on. Where there's a, sorry, <laughs> there's a cool little parallel thing going on where there's a um, there's a wet signal and a dry signal. So now what I'm listening for is I want the balance between the bass and the kick drum to, to be good. Usually I like to put the, the kick drum a little bit on top. Because that lets the kick drum hit harder. It's just something that my ear likes to hear. Let's see what's going on in Guitar Land here. What's going on in Guitar Land these days? stage bleed in these amps. Let's start with our rhythm guitar player. So he's got some verb going on.
Alright, so that sounds like crap, right? So let's see what it sounds like with the pace. So he's right in the same level wise as the bass. So those two are kind of like a, w a one single instrument. doing is just kind of brightening it up. Alright, so uh, something to be said also is um, that I didn't say earlier on in the project is that uh, this project is, is going to be the audio for video. Um, so th this is important when it comes time to panning. Um, so the rhythm guitar player is is on the um, uh, left hand side of the stage, which is uh, stage right, and the lead guitar player is on the right hand side of the stage, which is stage left. Uh, so we want to make sure that we pan those in that way. So let's uh, let's hard pan this guy left, and we'll hard pan this guy right, and we'll see what that sounds like. <laughs> slap into the rhythm guitar player.
I'm liking this so far. Drums are good. Get a little much snare. Let's back that down. Get a little, I'm getting a lot of hi hats here, so we can back that down just a little bit. Now, at this stage in the mix, uh, we're still just roughly kind of uh, placing everything um, in, in terms of spatially, so panning left and right, and then also uh, level-wise. So uh, the thing to, to keep in mind is what I usually like to do with panning is I like to put everything hard, uh, hard right and hard left, and then once I start my actual mixing, once the other instruments are really in there, uh, I like to bring things in. Um, and but what that I mean is in closer closer to center. Uh, there's a lot of guys that like to hard pan. Uh, some people th they only believe that there's three positions: hard right, uh, hard left, and center. Um, I like to kind of place things frequency wise. Um, you know I, what I'm gonna start to listen for now as as we uh, progress into this mix is um, what do I want to be the widest thing? Do I want the drums to be the widest thing? Do I want the guitars to be the widest thing? I'm thinking at this point I'm probably gonna want the guitars to be the widest thing. And to bring the drums in a little bit more closer to center, uh, just because visually you're looking at a rhythm guitar player on the left-hand side of your screen and a uh, lead guitar player on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, so to me, it just seems like you should, as you're watching it, your brain should spatially compute where, where those things are at. Um, the other thing that I'm going to listen for is how much do I want stuff to stick out? Um, so if we're listening to this, right now the hi-hat is really, it's sticking out a lot. So you can uh, solve that problem by just bringing it in a little bit. So we can still keep it wide. So let's go right to say 80 instead of hard. So my, my initial theories were correct. The drum kit is sounding a little bit more natural, but I still like the guitar's hard pan. So let's, let's keep listening. We can go down to our uh, group and just take our, our overheads down a little bit. Cool. I'm liking that. Um, Let's uh let's this is a good place to stop. Let's uh look at our uh, our horns next. <laughs> 